members, um, it is often said that uh, in our diversity is our strength. In this chamber, uh, many of us who are members of the General As Assembly all practice and embrace various and diverse faith traditions. But I am certain that whatever faith tradition you espouse, you have often heard as you have been in your house of worship, you've heard a parent's lament. It is not natural for a child to go before the parent. And we have experienced in the past three days one of the most horrific human events that any of us will ever remember during our lifetimes. We s experienced the loss of 20 elementary school children, ages six and seven, whose parents provided them with their morning cereal, their cup of cocoa, their favorite breakfast sandwich, got that kiss goodbye, sent them off to school, and we have parents in a state that shares the region with us who will never have that child come home again. I think that in this season, which has so many family traditions, there's not one of us in this chamber that does not on a personal or emotional level relate to the people of Newtown, Connecticut and to the families that have been affected by those wonderful, smiling, young, energetic faces who had their whole lives ahead of them. And the six dedicated educators who thought it would be a Friday wind down of the week to be confronted with such a horrendous, horrendous confrontation in their neighborhood school. As members of the New Jersey General Assembly, it is proper and fitting for us to take time out to recognize and acknowledge the loss of life that we have experienced in Newtown, for us to share our collective grief with the parents of those children, with the families of those educators, and with first responders who will never, ever, ever forget the gruesome scene that they had to enter upon. I am going to take a moment and I am going to ask Assemblyman Lou Greenwald to rise and in an illustration and demonstration of our solidarity with that community, I will ask that he rise and read the names of some of those children who will never come home from school again. Assembly Majority Leader Greenwald. Friends, I'm sure the scene that took place at my household this morning was very similar to what transpired across this country this morning as we hugged our children as we do every morning as so many of you have as our children left our house to go out to the bus stop. That embrace lasted a few seconds longer. I admit that my wife and I looked out that window until the bus came to see and grasp one last look at them until they got on that bus. And as we said the words that we say every morning, we'll see you when you get home from school, there was a sense to those words that hung in the air from my wife and I as we continue to instill the confidence in our children as we do through children across this country that those words do matter and that they will be safe in spite of what happened last Friday. The truth of the matter is that there are no words or actions that can heal the wounds of this tragedy for these families. 
but I ask you to join us today in a solemn moment as my friend John Bramnick and I read the names of these children. Charlotte Bacon, age six. Daniel Barden, age seven. Olivia Engel, age six. Josephine Gay, age seven. Anna Marquez Green, age six. Dylan Hockley, age six. Madeline Sue, age six. Catherine Hubbard, age six. Chase Kowalski, age seven. Jesse Lewis, age six. James Mattioli, age six. Grace McDonald, age seven. Emily Parker, age six. Jack Pinto, age six. Noah Posner, age six. Caroline Praviti, age six. Jessica Ricos, age six. Abiel Richmond, age six. Benjamin Wheeler, age six. Allison Wyatt, age six. Rachel Devino, age 29. Dawn Hochsprung, age 47. Nancy Lanza, age 52. Anne Marie Murphy, age 52. Lauren Rousseau, age 30. Mary Sherlock, age 56. Victoria Soto, age 27. Our hearts break today for the children, the educators, their families, and the community of Newtown. The loss of innocence, the loss of life, is simply beyond comprehension. Our hearts go out to all of those families in Newtown, Connecticut, and only hope that some peace they can find. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you. I would like to ask all members to please rise as we observe a moment of silence. Thank you very much.